Our mission over the next few videos is to demonstrate why certain individuals that are currently attempting to claim ancient ruins we so often share on our channel where the work of academia's claimed constructors are not only vastly incorrect, but that they are also being selectively ignorant. We intend to demonstrate the reasons why this explanation as to their origins is a virtual impossibility, and also prove the level of advanced knowledge needed to construct them evades even our modern civilization. Roman and Greek civilizations undoubtedly contributed tremendous amounts to modern life be it their technologies or building techniques. Architectural designs and ideas incorporated into structures that have survived millennia. However, there are many anomalous aspects of their academically claimed ruins that not only demonstrate unbelievable skill and precision, but are so advanced as to evade our own current understanding. One of these defining characteristics is undoubtedly polygonal masonry. Randomly shaped or possibly cast stones, with some for example found within Sacsayhuaman, reaching far into hundreds of tons, masterfully fitted together, constructed into walls and fortresses, with no utilization of mortars. These often enormous megalithic blocks somehow placed together so perfectly that not only have they survived countless millennia, but are also earthquake-proof. These stone walls are a demonstration of what can be achieved if one had an astonishing intellect, and indeed, stone-building capabilities. These walls simply evade modern human explanation. No modern, or indeed any of the well-studied ancient civilizations, have ever demonstrated anything even near to the levels of refinement exhibited within these ancient walls, found all over the globe yet ignored by academics the world over. How can certain individuals claim that academia's tale of events be accurate, yet seemingly overlook such astonishing feats of ancient engineering? How can one be expected to believe that the cultures currently claimed as having been responsible for such constructions, did indeed complete such tasks, when they are, in reality, too advanced an undertaking even for our own modern civilization. As such, continuing to evade explanation. We feel that many of these individuals are merely towing a line rather than attempting to unravel that which they perceive as enigmatic and considerably controversial to their current supposed viewpoint. We feel there is no excuse for a diligent researcher to overlook these achievements when investigating such sites, or indeed attempting to unravel the secrets of our past. We also feel that if one attempts to explain away such sites, or merely overlook such features in favor of academic explanation, it is an indication of conspiratorial motives rather than that of an honest purveyor of discoveries. There are many unexplained features of the ancient world many of which we intend to share over the coming videos, and if one merely wishes to convey an illusion of all-knowing, they are soon to become unstuck, just like the academia they so mindlessly follow and we so vehemently disagree with. Due to these deliberate twisting of the facts, they are undoubtedly highly compelling. The Necromantion Once used as a Greek temple of necromancy, Devoted by the Greeks to their god of the underworld Hades and his female consort Persephone. This site was believed by the Greek devotees to be the door of Hades, allowing entry to the realm of the dead. Located at the meeting point of the Acheron, Pyriphlegethon, and Cocytus rivers, which were believed to have also flowed through the kingdom of Hades. With names given to the rivers, presumably by the Greeks, interpreted to be joyless, burning coals, and lament. Whilst other temples, such as the Temple of Poseidon at Teneron, the temples at Hermione and Cumae in Italy, and Heraclea within Pontos, were known to have been used for the practice of necromancy. It was the Necromantion that was the most famous of them all. According to ancient Greek beliefs, while the bodies of the dead decayed in the earth, their souls would be released 
traveling to this purported underworld via fissures within the earth. These spirits of the dead, according to the ancient Greeks, were said to possess abilities that the living did not have, including the power of precognition, the power to foretell the future. They therefore claim that these temples were erected by them in locations that were entrances to this mysterious underworld, used as altars for the believers of such to practice necromancy, a belief form of communication with the dead. This practice was attempted in order to receive prophecy. However, if one explores the architecture of such site, not only does this ancient Greek claim of construction become a clear, dubiously attested claim, but the evidence for highly advanced precision block building, now known as polygonal masonry, is discovered throughout the site. This existence of such sophisticated block building, which is not only found within and upon nearly every as yet unexplained ancient site upon the Earth, but is incredibly similar in form to that of many other ancient sites within Italy. Specifically, the ancient wall which can still be found surrounding the Acropolis of Alatre and at other sites, including within the ancient ruins of Delphi. This astonishing feat of ancient engineering is as yet unexplained by modern academics, strongly indicating that this ancient site was originally built by a civilization now lost to history. Furthermore, like the enigmatic metal clamps, whose remnants are to be found within a number of these same ancient sites that were originally used by this highly intelligent group, these once utilized to keep the stones in their fitted positions as they shifted and settled over the millennia. These clamps' design vary from continent to continent. Our reason for mentioning this curiosity is that although the sophisticated methods of creating these ruins often remain similar or the same, depending upon the continent they are found, is dependent on the style and material these methods are made from. This, to us, strongly suggests that these ancient structures may have indeed been built by the different races, found within these differing countries. The commanding force, the leading power of these groups, was the same worldwide power and font of this knowledge, who, with their clearly incredible technological prowess, successfully created such structures, and indeed the Necromantion, which, regardless of their tremendous age, has successfully survived a vast amount of millennia, successfully making it into our own modern ancestors' lives, predictably adapted due to their wondrous nature, into their historical belief systems, often being adopted surrounding spirituality, either for a theistic worship, burial, or in the case of the Necromantion, for the use of contacting the dead through the mystic teachings of necromancy. It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Recently we posted a photograph of a rather perplexing megalithic ruin, now known as the White Rock of Vilcambaba or Nusta Hispana, shared within a community post on the channel's main page. The image predictably caused a lot of bafflement within our community, thusly we took it upon ourselves to dig a little deeper into what the true purpose of this monument could have once been. What we found not only answered this question, but has seemingly unraveled the original purpose of countless stone anomalies, and possibly answered one of the most critical issues of all. How were these megalithic walls of seemingly impossible, randomly cut polygonal masonry once constructed? There are countless finished sites of not only polygonal stonework, but simple yet incredible stable brick course blocks, some far exceeding 1,000 tons. Thus, it is not absurd to presume, like the trilithon, they were still cut, quarried, moved and lifted into place, somehow with incredible precision. How these blocks interlink was another mystery which we feel Nusta Hispana and now many other sites and their enigmatic abandoned blocks, often seemingly being mistaken for chairs, are the answer for how these polygonal walls were built, a secret hidden in plain sight for all these years with Nusta Hispana of Vilcambaba strangely seemingly unlocking this secret for us. 
All around the megalith lay finished stones ready for transportation, while the odd patterning still found upon the original bedrock are interlocking joints, which we have seen in a number of other locations and near polygonal areas themselves. Yet the Nusta Hispana megaliths Cuts along with that of the now broken Naupa Iglesia found near Olente Tambo share the same unfinished carvings and once enigmatic protuberances, seemingly abandoned suddenly, just like that of Nusta Hispana. Yet, thankfully, the carving patterns are indicative of so many other ruins we have found on location. It is seemingly unraveling the mystery and answering the question of what these mysterious cuts were for and what resulted from them. These seemingly random-shaped blocks were anything but. They were cut from their bedrock quarries, not only with incredible accuracy, but with unbelievable future insight, always taking into consideration the interlocking mechanism of every block that would later become the seemingly unbroken, impenetrable form of the world's polygonal constructions. Like that of the stone of the pregnant woman found within Baalbek, claimed as abandoned, firstly as it weighed over 1,000 tons and due to a slight incline, yet mere meters away the trilithon, which lay aloft with blocks placed atop others, each weighing thousands of tons. When excavated, the stone of the pregnant woman is just another gargantuan structural ruin. Blocks mistaken by tourists and natives alike for millennia as mere chairs were anything but. They were precision-made stones, walls designed to last the eons, possibly to leave a message to following generations, or possibly it is just a demonstration of these lost civilizations' past capabilities when it came to an advanced stone age. It is an ongoing mystery and answers to questions we have searched for years which we find the most accurately fitting to date, and thus highly compelling. Osaka Castle – one of the most important historical structures in Japan, having played a defining role in unifying Japan during the 16 centuries. It is a structure whose enigmatic characteristics we have covered in the past. The main tower of Osaka Castle, situated on a plot of land roughly one square kilometer in diameter, is built atop two raised platforms, supported by sheer walls of cut rock created using a technique called burdock piling. With some of these wall faces, also containing compelling precision ancient stonework, a feature we initially focused on in our previous video. However, there also exists other intriguing anomalies within the grounds of the castle, a series of stoneworks of gigantic proportions. Enormous walls, which many of you may not be aware of, rarely shared by academia. These sections were created with polygonal masonry techniques, a method of advanced block building unexplained, subsequently lost to the eons. Due to their unexplained nature, these hidden features, we believe, are clear evidence of an original structure, far outdating the modern castle and indeed attested historical accounts. Yet what is undoubtedly the most striking characteristic of these surviving barriers is their size. Many of the surviving blocks, each of a unique shape, were once masterfully placed, seemingly effortlessly atop one another, with incredible precision stones stretching far into the hundreds of tons. This astonishing feat of ancient engineering, utilizing blocks of gargantuan sizes, is also present at many other ancient sites throughout the world. It is not only indicative of a lost, advanced, highly capable civilization, but the question as to how they managed to cut, move, and eventually place such enormous weighted stones with such precision remains a baffling mystery yet to be unraveled. Furthermore, there not only exists astonishingly huge polygonal masonry within the grounds, but there also still exists mysterious carved stones in and around the grounds of Osaka Castle. 
perplexing megalithic stones, unquestionably carved for a past purpose, which possibly, due to their immense size, are the sole surviving remnants of other ancient features, now nearly all but eroded away. As such, their past function is now unknown. Yet regardless of these unanswered questions, we maintain a hypothesis that like the many other astonishing ancient ruins found on differing continents, for example, Baalbek, the Great Pyramids, Sacsayhuaman, Kulap, etc., that due to these sites' characteristics, specifically the immense size of the stonework involved in their original construction, and thus their once impenetrable nature, were utilized by a later civilization, and Osaka Castle being no exception, built upon a foundation far older than modern academia would ever willingly admit to. The fact that no modern explanation exists pertaining to how these gigantic megaliths came to be placed where they are found today, in addition to an absent understanding or explanation as to how polygonal masonry was completed, especially with such enormous quarried stones, we feel is strong evidence to support our posit that the foundations of these ancient structures are far older than their current dating. Foundations which were almost definitely the work of a past highly capable civilization, responsible for all the other as yet unexplainable ancient wonders found around the globe. The question is, who were these ancient builders? How did they move such massive stones? Did they utilize technologies reminiscent of modern-day lifting equipment? Were all of these ancient structures built by the same governing force, with the slight variations present from location to location only as a result of the different cultures who were responsible for the actual undertaking? Was this knowledge of highly advanced ancient building techniques shared worldwide? If this is the case, it is a strong indicator that most of what academia continues to peddle as a complete timeline of man is vastly inaccurate and missing vast chapters of past development. Where did this highly advanced group go? Why are there so many quarries and indeed unfinished ancient megaliths found all over the world, spanning as far as the notoriously remote island of Easter, all seemingly abandoned abruptly? Did this civilization fall victim to cataclysm? Or perhaps their fate was far more transcendental? Regardless of these unanswered questions regarding their final destination, we feel Osaka Castle is undoubtedly yet another example of extraordinary ancient feats of prehistoric engineering by a group we are yet to fully understand, and as such is undoubtedly highly compelling. <laughs>